It seems like people are going chicken crazy these days. Have you started raising your own chickens for eggs yet? Because many have with all the high prices of eggs lately. Many are starting to raise their own backyard flock of inflation chickens. <laughs> even people that you might not even think of. Like the actor Tom Holland who plays yeah, Spider-Man. Even he is raising his own chickens because allegedly he went to the grocery store and couldn't find any eggs. So he started raising some chickens. That's the most logical thing to do, right? And with this renewed interest in chickens, there's been a surge in people wanting egg laying chicks. So much so that many hatcheries have completely sold out of chicks for the year. Murray McMurray is the hatchery that I get my chicks, and ducklings, and poults from. And in January, when the egg prices were skyrocketing, they were getting flooded with calls of people wanting to place orders for chicks. And many of their heavy egg layers, they're sold out for the year. But thankfully, I ordered my chicks in December before the chicken frenzy officially began. And earlier in the week, I got an email that those birds had shipped. And then the next day, I got a call from the post office saying that your birds are here. But one of the things that I was hoping is, I hope we don't have any problems this time. Because the last time, the post office had a little bit of a mix up. And uh, let's just say my birds went to the wrong location. Hopefully it didn't happen this time. Hear them already? You yeah, hear them? <laughs> How are y'all today? Somebody else got some too today? A lot of people. Bro. There we go. The first few today. How you being? Wonderful. There we go. Your <laughs> appearance. There you go. You got it? Be very careful. Don't drop them. Those are my babies. My babies too. They're mine. Hey, <laughs> All right. Hop on in there. Sit right here, actually. Sit right there. All right. Seatbelt on. There you go. Well, the side's already in here and ready to go. Yeah, I've done this like a million times. <laughs> Let's see what these look like. Ooh. Got some yellow balls. <laughs> some little black ones. Now right there has a, a liver color. Yeah, nice. I love hearing these noises. I haven't heard it in so long. <laughs> it feels so good to hear all those little babies. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Alright, go ahead put it in. Yours in 
There you go. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Daddy. You ready to go see some chickens, my little farmer man? Huh? Are you? What are you doing? Are you ready? Are you ready? Huh? Are you ready? Come on. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come on. You coming? Huh? You gonna do some farm stuff? Need some more clothes on you? Need some more clothes on you? You don't have any pants on, man. Need some pants. Gotta get some pants on those legs. Ready to get warm? Go do some chores? Hey, mister. No, you don't. We're just gonna take it off this way. It's much easier. Oh, no. Don't be oh, Mr. No. Fussy Pants. Hey, you got that naked baby. Hey, what'd you think? He's like, get your clothes on me. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Where are all the fingers? There they are. Those little in here. here we go. Hold on, you gotta cooperate a little bit. You gotta cooperate. There we go. Gearing oh. up, aren't we? You ready to go? You ready to go? Look at you. I'm dressed, Daddy. Here we go. Let's go do it. Ugh. All right. All right. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> getting some morning sun. Not getting sleepy on me, are you? Good morning, everybody. How we doing today? So in here I have some future egg layers. We have white and green, which are supposed to lay like this mint green color egg. That sounds really neat. And also white and blue. And they're supposed to lay like these really neat looking blue eggs. I'm really excited about that because those eggs look really neat. And also in here we have, and some of you who may be just a little bit sensitive, may want to cover your ears and go la 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 for the next few seconds is, we also have some future chicken dinners in here. Yes. <laughs> Dark Cornish and Delaware Broiler. Looking forward to seeing how they taste. The Delaware Broiler, we've raised those in the past and mm, they taste good. But I haven't done the dark, dark Cornish before, so we're gonna see how they taste a little bit later on. So I know it's hard to tell here in the red light, but the yellow ones are the Delaware Broilers, most likely. And then you can see the dark ones running around there. Those are probably our dark Cornish, and then you got your other speckled kind of colors. That's probably our white ones there. All right. So you got more savings in there than you do food now. Get that out of there.
time it's best just to fill it up like this instead of trying to open it up. All right, it's breakfast time, everybody. Uh, let's see this time. You guys are a little older. We're going to put the feet on this one. Make it work for it a little bit. Here we go. I'm on back. And then here, get some more pine cheese. Dude is sleeping now. Just snoozing right here. And speaking of feed, I recently did this live stream with Eric from Pleasant Pond Poultry and we talked about raising heritage brawlers for chicken dinners. <laughs> and one of the things that he shared was absolutely insightful. It was a feeding program for heritage brawlers and how to save money as well as increase the meat on the bird. Because my goal is to get away from the sea monsters, the big cornice crosses that everyone is raising. Yes, they're a good bird to start with if you just need to get some meat on the table. However, some people view them as like this hybrid mutant that it's gotten away from what the original design of a chicken should be. And also, I wanna be able to breed my own broilers, meat birds, in the event that our favorite hatcheries can't get those things to us, I want to be able to reproduce them on our own so that way we have chicken dinners for my family. Well you also may have seen in here some little ducklings. We also got some khaki Campbell ducklings and it's one of the best egg laying ducks. Most people think of chickens when they think of eggs but actually the khaki Campbell can lay up to like 340 eggs a year per, per, per duck. So if you're looking for eggs you may want to consider ducks instead of chickens. Over the years, we've incubated eggs numerous times. However, with the prices of eggs and chicks running low at hatcheries, it's got me motivated to want to hatch eggs more, for sure. But I did have a little bit of a setback here recently with incubating some eggs. All right, what we got here? Oh man. Uh oh. That egg looks like it's about to explode any minute. I do hear one that's peeping at us though. Let's get rid of this explosive one. Very carefully. Come on, I hope we're not sticking on that one. Oh boy. It's already starting to crack. Oh man. Here we go. Definitely not something that I enjoy doing. But you gotta get them out of there. All right, I know there's one peeping in here. Did you figure out which one it is? I think inside? it's this one right here. Which one? That one. Right there. Oh, that's a little chick. A little chicken. There is nothing in this egg. Then what happened? <laughs> Did it disappear? Where is it at? Is it, is it under here somewhere? Is it invisible? What the world? Is it duckling? What in the world? I have never seen this happen. Ah, I can hear something. It's got to be somewhere. There's, there's this egg, this hat. But the, where's the, the, the chick? <laughs> this is crazy. I don't hear it from anywhere. Wait, found it, I think. One of them at least. Oh, that's where the sound's coming from. Well, this one's definitely coming from here. 
that doesn't explain what happened here. It could have exploded. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe this egg exploded. It is a little messy in here than it was when I last checked. Yeah, and all that egg yolk stuff at the bottom. Oh man, it, it is kind of messy in here in the brooder. Ah, but I've smelled worse. It doesn't smell great, but I've smelled worse. So maybe that's what happened. Chick just exploded and it disappeared into another dimension. <laughs> Funny, funny. All right. So, I guess we'll take this one. What about the other chicks helping it out? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's see if the other chicks will encourage this to come out. In there was a duckling in it. All right, you say I'm gonna open that up for me. Hey, you wanna encourage Fran to come out? The more it looks like that first egg that didn't have anything in it, it just it just exploded in here. Wow, I haven't really had this happen before in my incubator. I've had the eggs explode, but usually in my hands as I'm checking them. Crazy! It just exploded on me. Look at that! Gross. Oh, I was so careful with that other one too, and then bam, you have this happen. And when this one popped, it sounded like almost like when you have a light bulb that pops. And it's, oh man, I'm starting to stink too. <laughs> got multiple. Ooh, got multiple. Possibilities for explosion. Let's set them down. What is it? It's the chick. What about it? Came the chick? out of the shell. Really? And it came out of a shell? Yeah. Yeah. Where at? Right. Oh wow, it did. Alright, let's... Here it might be too hot. Let's put it over here under the heat plate. It won't be as hot there. And a little less likely to get trampled by the other ones there. Okay, so I know taking the chick out of the incubator before it completely hatched was probably somewhat controversial. And I did that because one, I was thinking, well, what if another egg explodes in there? I didn't want it exploding on the chick. And two, in the past, I've seen where a, an egg was starting to hatch and it was just all alone. And it's almost like it got discouraged and it didn't, it just died in the shell. It didn't come out. So I was thinking, take it over there with the rest of them, hearing all the peeping sound, and it just encourages it to come out. So that's what I, that's what I was thinking. And after diagnosing what went wrong with the incubator? Well, one, our plug, one of the plugs had come out, one of the main plugs, and it was just allowing cool air to come in. So getting another thermometer and actually checking to make sure that your incubator is actually the temperature that it's saying is really key. So that was a mistake, number one. Also, we got our days a little bit mixed up, didn't quite mark those correctly, and probably took the eggs off the egg turner sooner than we should. So that's probably why we had some of the issues that we did with the eggs in my head, the explosion egg. Oh, and I do have a warning for those of you who are considering raising chicks, chickens, for the first time. 
I do want to warn you that they're not some kind of gadget that you can just turn on and off whenever it is that you want something from it. No, it's a live animal, so it's going to require things. And they may be a little bit more expensive to raise than you originally planned. They need feed, they need shelter, they need protection from animals, they need things like that. Oh, and they also probably will be a little bit more work than you thought as well. So just a warning that just because egg prices are high and you're like, oh, I'm just going to get me some chickens and I'm just going to automatically have me some eggs. And that's all I'm going to have to do. Good to go, right? No, there's going to be something involved with it. Some of the most common mistakes that I see people make with raising chickens are one, when they have them in a static run, an area where they keep them in, they don't provide them with fresh bedding. And that's really important because you, who wants to be hanging out and living where their poop is? So the fresh bedding, whether it be mulch, leaves, grass clippings, hay, whatever, they need to have it so that way their area say, stays sanitized and also so they can express their chickenness so they can get in there and just scratch and do the things that chickens do and eat whatever it is that they're eating because i can't see it you probably can't see it either but they see it and another mistake that people make with raising chickens is they just say well we'll let them free range and they let them free range and then they have trouble getting them to come back into the coop or whatever and then gradually their chickens just start getting picked off one after another after another or their chickens are also pooping over the on the neighbor's car and everywhere else so you do have to be mindful of some of those kind of things now i'm not trying to discourage anyone from raising chickens because raising chickens is great it's fun you get farm fresh eggs that they're the best eggs that you can eat much 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 better than the store and they are a lot of fun and just neat to watch just watching them scratch and dig and do the things that chicken do it's pretty neat and here on my farmstead, we take our chickens onto fresh grass during the warmer months. But in the cooler months, when the grass and things aren't growing, we keep them in a the static run with fresh bedding, like right here. And I also keep a flock of chickens in this area throughout the year to make compost for us. And a number of these, as well as the new chicks that we got, well, they're gonna be moving on to fresh grass really, really soon. 